everyone, how's it going? In case you've just joined us, my name is Atusa, I'm a third year medical student and I'm making a video every day in the month of November. Now today's video is a topic that I have been getting questions on pretty much since the start of lockdown and I've been trying to collect my thoughts and come up with ideas but basically I want to share with you some thoughts and some possible suggestions that you can take on if you would like to get virtual work experience. Either if you are a prospecting medical student and hope to apply to medical school or if you're a biomedical science student and are hoping to get some sort of work experience or work placement or just some sort of a project that you can do as an extracurricular activity. Now these are just suggestions and I know that in a lot of cases getting these opportunities may be either difficult or may have its own challenges but I'm hoping that by at least putting it out there that you guys can take the idea, use your own initiative and see if you can make something come out of it. And obviously if any of you guys are watching and have any suggestions or any further thoughts that I haven't mentioned in this video, please share them with us down below so that the rest of us can also benefit as well. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm going to first focus on medical students or prospective medical students who are hoping to apply to university and some of the ways that they can get work experience in a clinical setting that will be helpful to them when they come to write up their applications and then I will focus a little bit more on the biomedical student side. So starting with any students who are hoping to apply to medicine, when I was thinking about what sort of work experience or virtual work experience that you guys could get, this is the first thing that came to my mind. Now as a medical student myself, at the moment a lot of our patients who are going into the clinics, for example the GPs, are being seen in online or audio consultations or like telephone consultations. And a potential avenue that you guys could explore is to try and get in touch with hospitals and clinics and GP practices or even individual doctors that you know and ask them if it would be possible for you to listen in on some of the telephone consultations. Now obviously with any other work experience I'm certain that your practice or the hospital will want, want you to carry out some sort of risk assessment obviously because you are dealing dealing with confidential patient data. However, as I said, in the few times that I have been in clinics with the doctors, usually what happens is that the doctors will be speaking to the patients and at the beginning of the telephone consultation, they will say, I have got a medical student sitting in the room with me listening to this talk. Is that okay with you? And if the patient agrees and says that it's okay, then the doctor will carry out the consultation and I as a student get to sit and listen in and see what's happening. Now obviously the difference here is that I am present in the clinic myself. However, if you're a student, if you were able to find a doctor who would be happy and willing, you could ask them, is it okay if I give you a call and if you have your phone on the side and I listen to the consultations that you have? Then, depending on how much time that GP or that doctor has, they may even answer some of the questions that you have. I know that this may be quite a challenging thing to try and organise, especially if you have to organise it yourself, but I would say try and explore this avenue and see if you can get in touch with various individuals who may be happy for you to do that. Now the second piece of advice I have in terms of virtual work experience is trying to get in touch with other healthcare professionals other than doctors. Now you might be thinking well okay I'm applying to medical school I'd rather just observe doctors or surgeons or GPs I don't necessarily want to spend time talking to other healthcare professionals but actually I would say that a big part of coming to write your personal state statement and also talking about your work experience will be to do with the multidisciplinary disciplinary team and also being able to reflect on your experiences. I remember when I was 17 and I did a bit of work experience, some of the most fruitful and interesting conversations that I had was with some of the nurses and other healthcare professionals. Through speaking to them I got m a much more broad perspective into medicine and in fact in medical school now we even have to do projects where we speak to different healthcare professionals and get their experience of how they're involved in patient care. So if doctors may be slightly more inaccessible, especially during these times, then if you could get in touch with various nurses, physiotherapists, dietitians, or any other member of the multidisciplinary team and asking them, can I ask you questions for 15 minutes? If you were able to do that and ask them some questions about what it's like to work in healthcare, I think that will provide you with 
an amazing amount of information that you can reflect on when it comes to writing up your personal statement and also preparing for interviews. And I think this is a point that I try to emphasize a lot to any young students who are wanting to apply to medicine. It's really, really important how you reflect on what you have seen, not just necessarily seeing something. And what I mean by that is, I'm sure it would be absolutely amazing if you had a week of work experience in surgical theatres watching surgery. However, if you didn't get the chance to speak to patients or speak to doctors as much, then you would have less to reflect on. And the surgery itself, with everything online nowadays, you could watch the technical procedure and learn about the technicalities and the science just by watching the video. The richness of being in person, obtaining work experience, is the people and the experiences that the people will teach you. So hopefully being able to chat to some of these professionals will help you in that sense. And the way that I would suggest going about trying to find contact details for these healthcare professionals, again, I would say directly contact your hospital or any local rehabilita rehabilitation centre. Did I say that right? Yeah. Rehabilitation centre or any GP practices. Contact them and just ask politely if anybody has 10 or 15 minutes to chat to you. And hopefully if they do and you have a good set of pre-planned questions ready, then I'm sure that you can learn a lot. All right. Now moving on to certain suggestions for biomedical students who are looking to either do a project or just to get some sort of work experience. And actually, I would say that if you are a student hoping to apply to medicine as well, some of these can apply to you too, especially if you have an academic interest and would like to do maybe a science project on the side. So the first suggestion that I would give, and I know that it can seem a bit like a shot in the dark, but I think it would definitely be worth it. It is basically to email supervisors or email people who are within certain industries that you want work experience in, let's say a pharmaceutical company or let's say a science communication company. Try and get the phone numbers or email addresses to these individuals, get in touch with them, explain your situation and say that you are looking to get work experience and this is something that you would like to pursue and simply ask if there is something that is available to you. And the reason why I say this, and I, again as I said I know it can be a bit of a shot in the dark, is because sometimes there may be things put into place but you may not just be, you may just not be aware of them fully. And it doesn't harm in sending an email, giving a quick phone call, and just inquiring. That's the first thing that I would say as a basic standard. Now the second thing is when you are contacting your supervisors or university lecturers, I would try and find out if there are certain projects that need doing that can be done remotely. So you may contact certain individuals who work more in bioinformatics or biostatistics or public health, things that you can do just using data on your computer. And this is because certain lab projects require you to be physically in the lab and carry out experiments. But a lot of science isn't like that. A lot of science can be data driven. That means if you manage to build good rapport and have good communication with a supervisor, let's say through Zoom calls or like telephone calls, then you will be able to do this project on the side and still be supervised virtually. So when you come to making contact with these individuals, have a look on the university website of which supervisors work in these more, let's say, dry lab projects and maybe get in touch with them first and see if they have any projects available. Finally, what I would say is that if you do get in touch with some of these supervisors, perhaps even before asking them if they have any project, perhaps ask them if they would be happy to put you in touch with either their PhD students or their postdoctoral fellows. I can appreciate that a lot of these supervisors who run these labs are going to be tremendously busy, especially during these times. But if a PhD student is kind enough to take you on, then they may be the ones who can have these video consultations with you, they may be able to explain to you their science that they're doing, what their project is all about, and although that doesn't necessarily equate to the experience that you yourself would have working in a lab, it's a good place for you to start and having somebody there to sort of support you and answer your questions will at least help you in getting a bit of a head start. And the other thing that I would say in both of these cases is since you are contacting these individuals through email, I would say try and write your emails in a way that is proactive but isn't too pushy. And the reason why I say this is because I know this is quite a challenging time for a lot of students who may feel like they don't have enough work experience. It's really easy to just email people and be like, do you have any work experience? This is what I want. And when 
you send a lot of emails like that, I'm sure these individuals get a lot of them, so they may ignore a very well-meaning email because of the way that it's constructed. And I'm actually going to be making a separate video about that, probably to go up tomorrow. So I will talk a bit more about that in the next video, but I would just say that if you are contacting people, then make sure that your email is polite and that you're being appreciative of the fact that their doctors or the scientists that you're getting in touch with are actually very busy and they probably have a lot going on. And I suppose now I'm going to open up the floor to you guys and ask if you have any suggestions, any thoughts, any ideas, any possibilities that we can go about trying to get work experience in this time or at least start doing things that are a bit more proactive to give us a bit of a head start once things fully open. Alright, I will leave it there my lovelies and I will see you in tomorrow's video.